I wish to share my experience on an incident which occurred a number of years ago. At that time, I was working as a staff nurse in a large teaching hospital. The incident occurred on night duty. I was in charge of a 32-bedded surgical ward. Working with me that night was a junior staff nurse and a healthcare assistant. I was the bleep holder. This meant that I was a point of contact to provide advice and support to the nursing teams in the surgical block and the bed management issues would be filtered through me. On this night, I was the only competent nurse who could administer intravenous antibiotics for the surgical block. It fell to me to visit the other wards in the surgical block to administer the intravenous antibiotics. When I was going off duty on the Saturday morning, a patient who had undergone pancreatic surgery was one day post-operative. He had an epidural infusion running to manage his pain control, and this was running low and needed to be reconstituted in about two hours' time. At that time, nurses couldn't reconstitute epidurals, and the anaesthetic team had to do so. I did a handover to the nurse coming on duty and asked that they contact the anaesthetic team. When I came back on duty that night, the patient's epidural had not been reconstituted, even though the anaesthetic team had been contacted. I called the on-call anaesthetist and asked them to attend to the patient's pain relief, which they agreed to do. I proceeded to take the handover of the ward. When I was at the far end of the ward, I noticed the anaesthetist enter the ward with an infusion bag in their hand and the day nurse brought them into the patient's room. A few moments later I saw the anaesthetist leave the ward. I gestured to the day nurse with a thumbs up and they also gave me a thumbs up indicating the epidural had been reconstituted. I went about my nursing duties and once I had the patients on my ward attended to I visited the other wards to administer the intravenous antibiotics. I returned to the ward at about 1.30 and sat at the nurse's station to start writing some clinical notes. The healthcare assistant asked if they could make me a cup of tea, which I said yes to. It was at that moment I realised I hadn't properly reviewed the patient who had pancreatic surgery and an epidural infusion running, so I went to review him. When I entered the room, I initially noticed that they were sleeping. However, I quickly noticed their breathing was very shallow and slow. I tried to wake the patient and could not arouse them to painful stimuli. I pulled the emergency bell and summoned the crash team. I turned off the epidural and administered oxygen. I noticed that the epidural pump was delivering a dose of 2 mils per hour instead of 0 0.2 mils per hour. When the crash team arrived, they administered Narcan, which reversed the opioid, and the patient woke up and responded well. The following morning, when I was at home, the ward manager phoned me, and their first question to me was, how are you? I remembered saying that I was shook and not feeling great. The ward manager recognised that they had placed me and the patients at risk, because the skill mix that night was inadequate for the acuity of care and this was compounded by me having to hold the bleep for the surgical block. I acknowledged that I should have checked the pump, and I didn't. This was something I owned. The anaesthetist who attended recorded in the clinical records that they had set the pump incorrectly that night. Following the incident, I agreed to speak to the staff working in the surgical block about the incident and share the learning, and in particular, the checking of pumps. The managers of the surgical wards agreed that they would review duty rotas to ensure that there was adequate skill mix when somebody was covering the surgical block. The night the incident occurred, nurses rostered for duty had taken unplanned leave and their replacements did not have the required competency to administer intravenous antibiotics on other wards. This was acknowledged and was considered going forward when booking agency and bank staff. From a personal perspective, 
This incident did cause me to question my ability and competency. It also brought home the importance of leadership when managers are dealing with incidents. The manner in which the manager responded to the incident provided a safe space for me to be able to talk openly about the incident. This reduced the fear in me to report and encouraged reporting of incidents and near misses. This influenced other colleagues to report as the fear and learned observed behaviours from our past were revisited in a positive manner. Maybe most importantly, I felt that I remained a valued member of the team who was not judged because of one issue. The lessons learned by me from this one incident was that when an incident occurs, it is important that we support each other at a personal and professional level, recognising that we must review what happened in a systematic way, not looking to apportion blame and seek to identify the system failures. It is also important to be open about things when they go wrong and not to hide away, as it can create a culture where trust is broken and staff can feel ashamed and embarrassed. The support I received that morning helped me process the incident quickly, as I felt it was fair and just. There was learning for all of the team. No one gap in practice was greater than another practice failure, And as a cumulative, they became a system failure which impacted on patient safety.